Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you how to learn about blues fiddle on the Fiddle Channel. I've done a lot of videos already on the Fiddle Channel about different aspects of blues and, and this video is going to be something that brings a lot of them together and suggests the different videos that you might watch to learn about different aspects of the blues. I suggest the first video that you look at is my story of blues violin because this explains how uh, the violin in blues was actually uh, one of the key features of the early development of blues and uh, in America probably at the turn of the 19th century to the 20th century uh, probably half of the fiddle players in America were black African-American violinists and, uh, and they were a key uh, part of the development of blues. So I've also got where are all the black fiddle players which um, is, is another part of the same story. So check these out and you'll see why um, the, the fiddle playing blues is so important and how the blues has become central not only to blues itself but to bluegrass, to country, to jazz and to rock. And so even if you don't actually play in a blues band, and I have to admit I've only ever once in my life played in a blues band, um, I do consider blues to be an absolute essential foundation of your playing. So, um, one of the first things you need to grasp about blues is the 12 bar blues sequence. Um, and uh, one of the most basic uh, tunes that you can get to demonstrate this is the Milk Cow Blues. So I'm just going to play a little bit of that to give you an idea of what those 12 bars are. <laughs> to listen to a lot of blues and be able to recognize the the three chords the one the four and the five and to be able to predict when the chord changes are going to come uh, another um, simple 12 bar blues is the Knox County blues but the the video I did on this emphasizes the sliding and bending which is an important part of blues <laughs> And that's a good example of uh, what you might call a country blues, um, typically played on the fiddle with either a banjo or guitar. And uh, the blues did develop quite a lot uh, from there um, onwards, uh, particularly when it became mostly electric and moved to Chicago. But that's, that's in the story of blues violin. Not all blues have exactly the same chord sequence and there are various um, small changes that you can add to that 12 bar blues. Uh, one being instead of going from the um, having four bars of the of the one chord, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, you can go straight from the one chord to the four chord. And a good example of that is Route 66. It's also, it becomes apparent that not all blues have 12 bars as well. And I've done various examples of videos of tunes which are not 12 bars. Um, Milwaukee Blues, for example, Carroll County Blues. Um, they are both kind of crooked, um, unpredictable, shall we say. Death Don't Have No Mercy is a very good 16 bar blues. And we have 9 by 9 which unsurprisingly is 9 bars long. 
Uh, Basin Street uh, is a, a jazz blues which has two sections and isn't really structured like a blues at all. Um, the majority of blues are in major keys but some are in minor keys and I, I really like these and one of my favourites is uh, Black Magic Woman um, and also Green Onions and I've, I've done videos of both of those. I'll just give you a little bit of Black Magic Woman. <laughs> When it comes to soloing there are two important aspects to, uh, that you need to get a grasp of. One is the blues scales and the other is blues riffs. And uh, a, a quick word of warning about blues scales. Um, they are kind of an obsession of people like myself who teach the blues. Um, and to a certain extent blues scales were invented by people like me, um, not by the people who originally developed the blues. So they are, shall we say, an oversimplification. But I would say they're a very helpful oversimplification. Just don't get too tied to them. Um, it's very important to recognize the difference between the major blues scale and the minor blues scale. And I have to admit that uh, a lot of people who teach the blues don't actually recognize that, that there is such a thing as a major blues scale. Um, but for the violinist in particular, I think it's a very important concept. And if you're going to be playing, let's say, a lot of Hank Williams, which is uh, mostly in major keys, uh, and you want to play some blues in there, which always works, then it's the major blues scale that you want. Before I go any further with the blues scale, though, I just want to show you the pentatonic scale, because this is kind of the basis of the blues. So for G major, that's the pentatonic scale. And I've done a couple of videos on this. One explains uh, how useful the blues scale is in uh, folk tunes, shall we say. And the second one um, then moves on to show how useful it is in the um, improvisation, uh, either in country, in bluegrass, in jazz or in rock. So the G major pentatonic scale turns into the G major blues scale with the addition of one note, namely the flat and fifth. And I've got a video all about the major blues scale. If you also had a flattened fifth and a flattened seventh, then what you get is this. And that's what I call the G minor blues scale. And um, the video on the minor blues scale in particular explains uh, how you go about deciding whether or not you're going to use the one or the other. And it's important that you get that right. I've done quite a few call and response exercises on my Patreon page where I take a particular blues scale and I play uh, licks and uh, you listen and you play back those licks and I think you'll find those very useful. If you've not joined me on Patreon then do please consider that because that's uh, what keeps these videos coming. The danger of uh, learning uh, just scales is that uh, you'll end up noodling. And by noodling, I mean kind of randomly wandering up and down the scale without any uh, forethought or any passion. And I'm just going to uh, demonstrate <laughs> how boring it can be when you noodle with a scale. <laughs> between the second one and the first one was that with the second one I was using actual blues licks which are pre uh, learnt and um, repeated a lot. So rather than randomly moving around the scale if you uh, just settle for in 112 bars maybe three different licks and keep on playing them that is going to sound a lot more um, like you mean it <laughs> like you know what you're doing. 
So I've done a lot of videos on blues licks and in fact my um, one of the first ones that I did was 40 blues violin licks and that has been my successful my most successful video to date. Um, I've also done um, 20 licks for the House of the Rising Sun, um, 20 rock and blues licks from Sugarcane Harris, um, 20 blues licks in E and also a video on what I call the 124 lick and I'll just demonstrate that. It's um, if you take three notes from the pentatonic scale and finger them one, two, four, then uh, that just makes a great lick in itself. And I'm just going to demonstrate that with a bit of Black Magic Woman. And so on. I find that a most satisfying lick to play. I've done several videos which combine the use of double stops to define the chords along with developing a blues solo. And this is a very useful thing because um, as a blues fiddle player you very often just rely on other people to provide the chords. And if you want to be the leader rather than the follower, um, if you want to start a jam for example, then it's a great idea if you can actually define the chords yourself. Um, so I did one of these in G and one in C, and I think I did one in E on Patreon as well. So in G, for example, you can do something like this. So that really defines the chords clearly, but it doesn't tie you down and it doesn't stop you from improvising. So I think you'll find those really useful. Finally, I've done uh, various videos on rock numbers, which are not blues in themselves, but use a great deal of blues technique. And most of the soloing in these is on the minor blues scale. And examples of those would be uh, Led Zeppelin's Cashmere, which turned out to be <laughs> a great deal more challenging than I expected. Uh, Long Train Running by the Doobie Brothers, one of my favourites. And the one I'm going to play you out with, which is uh, Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper. Thank you for watching this. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you want to see links to all of these videos, then do look in the description. And as I said earlier, it will help me greatly if you consider joining me on Patreon, because that's what keeps these videos coming. Thank you for watching. I'll play you out with Don't Fear the Reaper. <laughs>